In last week's video, we learned about the potential of AI image generation for education and explored different examples of how you can start using images generated by artificial intelligence in your classroom. In today's video, we'll teach you the ins and outs of crafting the best prompts in what is arguably the most powerful AI image generation tool today, Midjourney. It's important to keep in mind that Midjourney currently offers 25 free prompts for new users before they need to sign up for a paid subscription. However, the tips you'll see in this video will help you with most of the other AI image generation tools out there, such as DALI and Stable Diffusion. So even if you don't want to go for Midjourney, the concept behind these prompt engineering techniques will still be useful. So with that out of the way, let's dive right in. The first tip is providing specific style. Midjourney's image outputs come with their default aesthetic style, that is. Unless provided with specific details about a particular style you want, it will provide its own. Let's see this with an example. In the left image, I used to prompt a female student putting her laptop into her backpack. In the right image, I used the exact same prompt, only adding style cartoony at the end. This is very useful when designing materials for specific age groups. Cartoony images might be more engaging for younger students, while more realistic images will probably appeal more to an older audience. Depending on the activity, one style or another will fit your intention better. You can even prompt for images with the style of a particular artist or animation studio, like Studio Ghibli or Pixar. Next is creating stock images. Version 5.1 of Midjourney is more opinionated than the previous versions, which means it requires fewer details to produce images closer to what you're looking for while keeping a good degree of creativity. However, you can toggle between the different versions by using the command slash settings and selecting the one you prefer. Another really useful mode you can use is the raw mode which is accessed by either adding the parameter double dash style raw to the end of your prompt or selecting the mode in the settings. Let's see another example. In the left image, we have the same output as before when using the default 5.1 version prompt. In the right image, we applied the parameter double dash style raw to create a more straightforward stock-like picture. As you can see, the default 5.1 images are more expressive and carry more meaning to them, while the raw images try to stay closest to a realistic depiction of your prompt. This is great for when you just want to get a few stock images to enhance your learning materials that do not distract too much from your message. Tip number three, use basic parameters. Applying basic parameters to your prompts works in a similar fashion to prompting for a specific style. The reason I place them in a separate category is that while defining the overall style of the prompt impacts the large-scale aspect of the image, the basic parameters act more like a stylizing tool that further refines the outcome. It's like adding the details. To use any of them, simply write a double dash plus the parameter you want and the numerical values when needed. Let's see some of the most important ones. First one is Aspect Radio. Midjourney's Aspect Radio is one by one, which means you'll get square images. However, you can get different aspect radios by providing a specific value, like for example 16 by 9 for rectangular images. Second one is Negative Prompting. Negative prompting is used when you don't want a specific element from your image. We could, for example, prompt for our previous cartoony student image, but with no books. And third one is chaos. Higher chaos values will produce more unusual and unexpected results, while lower ones will be more reliable. Think of it as letting the AI run wild and come up with its own ideas. And there you have it. These are all the tips you need to know to start creating your AI-generated visual learning materials. When combined with other artificial intelligence tools like ChatGPT, you can truly optimize your workflow to create top-quality learning experiences that are personalized to your students. If you want to learn how to do so, you can also watch our guide on the best ChatGPT prompt engineering techniques for teachers. You can also check our other content related to education and technology on our website, small.net. 
At Smalltech, we develop a proctoring solution, Small, that uses machine learning and artificial intelligence to help businesses and educational institutions guarantee integrity under digital and online assessments. We hope this video helped you gain insight into prompt engineering for mid-journey. If you liked it, please give us a like and share the video. See you in the next one.